Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, World War II veterans commemorate in Jerusalem VE Day, the Allied victory over Nazi Germany, with several hundreds of Jewish veterans of the Allied armies parading the streets of the city. Prime Minister Netanyahu welcomes the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joseph Dunford, during which the Israeli leader emphasizes the close relations between Washington and Jerusalem. Despite fierce opposition from Turkey, President Donald Trump has approved supplying arms to the Kurdish YPG militia to support an operation to conquer the Syrian city of Raqqa from the Islamic State. World War II veterans commemorated in Jerusalem VE Day, the Allied victory over Nazi Germany with several hundred of Jewish veterans of the Allied armies parading the streets of the city. The veterans, many of them wearing their old uniforms and war medals, were joined by their families in the march toward Jerusalem's Mount of Remembrance, where a monument stands to honor the Jewish soldiers and partisans of World War II. I came with my mother to celebrate a victory day. I think this is a huge day for uh, ho the whole world and uh, we need to support uh, people who fight for us during the second war. So the, all our family, like my grandfathers, they, they was in the war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed several Jewish Red Army war heroes to his office in Jerusalem, where he stated his appreciation for their great historic contribution in defeating the Nazi army, emphasizing the debt of the Jewish nation for their heroic contribution. <laughs> אני גאה, אנחנו כולנו גאים בכם, אני רואה את המדליות של המלחמות. כנראה שמגיע לך, ואני יודע שכל מדליה כזאת עלתה בהרבה דם, הרבה הקרבה. ולכן אני מעריץ גדול שלכם, והעם חב לכם תודה גדולה. Following their meeting, Prime Minister Netanyahu welcomed the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joseph Dunford, during which the Israeli leader emphasized the close relations between Washington and Jerusalem and the vital cooperation between the U.S. military and the IDF. We have a, a great alliance between Israel and the United States and a great alliance between the, the American military and the IDF. We appreciate it and we know that this uh, alliance is good not only for security but also for security. During their meeting, which was also attended by IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Gadi Eisenkot, the Prime Minister introduced to the Chief of the U.S. Military the Jewish war veterans of World War II that served in the Red Army. Now with regard to the raging conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, despite fierce opposition from Turkey, U.S. President Donald Trump has approved supplying arms to the Kurdish YPG militia to support an operation to conquer the Syrian city of Raqqa from the Islamic State, which is the de facto capital of the extreme Muslim group in the war-torn country. The Kurdish YPG militia, which is part of a U.S.-backed alliance called the Syrian Democratic Forces, is viewed by Turkey as the Syrian extension of the internationally recognized terror group, the Kurdish PKK, which has fought an insurgency in Turkey's southeast since 1984. In a bid to reassure Turkey, a member of the NATO alliance, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer emphasized that the United States is committed to prevent any security risks to Turkey. That said, Spicer stressed that Washington views the SDF alliance as the only force on the ground that can successfully seize control of Raqqa in the near future, a campaign that would bring the U.S. coalition yet another step forward toward eliminating the Islamic State. Yesterday, the president authorized the Department of Defense to equip Kurdish elements of the Syrian Democratic Forces as necessary to ensure a clear victory over ISIS in Raqqa, Syria. The, SFD, the SDF partnered with enabling support from U.S. and coalition forces are the only force on the ground that successfully sees Raqqa in the near future. We're keenly aware of the security concerns of our coalition partners in Turkey. Uh, we want to reassure the people and the government of Turkey that the U.S. is committed 
to preventing additional security risks and protecting our NATO ally. Uh, the U.S. continues to prioritize support for Arab elements of the SDF. Raqqa and all liberated territories should return to the governance of local Syrian Arabs. Uh, the fight for Raqqa will be long and difficult, but ultimately uh, yet another defeat for ISIS and another step towards eliminating the ISIS threat uh, that threatens peace and security in the region and the world. Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis declared during an official state visit to Denmark that any issues Washington has with Moscow must be resolved by diplomats and no other way. The declaration by the American top defense official came after he announced upon arrival in Copenhagen that the United States would examine a Russian proposal for de-escalation zones in Syria, which aimed to ease the bloody conflict that already claimed the lives of half a million people and created the worst refugee crisis since World War II. Nevertheless, as trust between Washington and Moscow seems to be at an all-time low, Secretary Mati said that the document will have to be examined very carefully to assure that the details would truly fulfill the desired reality. You know, we're going to have to look at it. The devil's always in the details, right? So we've got to look at the details, see if we can work them out, see if we think their effect going to be effective. Uh, can we can we actually execute them? In other words, there's there's a lot of decisions to be made, both in planning. I would say in planning, coordination among a number of nations, and obviously in execution. Uh, lot, lots to be worked out. Can't give you a lot of specifics, but uh, we owe it uh, to the situation there, the people there, to at least examine it very, very carefully. The de-escalation zones agreement, which was formulated and signed upon by Russia, Turkey and Iran, aims at bolstering a nationwide cessation of hostilities that would establish a foundation for a much desired political process that would see an end to the conflict. That said, Russia's deputy defense minister emphasized that additional guarantees for the implementation of the document by both the United States and Saudi Arabia would further assure its success. Конструктивный настрой Ирана и Турции, поддержавших идею укрепления режима прекращения боевых действий, сыграл важную роль в оперативной подготовке меморандума к подписанию. Позитивное значение в вопросе создания зоны деэскалации имела и позиция Соединенных Штатов, приветствовавших шаги по снижению насилия в Сирии. В то же время поддержка документа ООН Администрация США, руководством Саудовской Аравии и другими странами является дополнительной гарантией его претворения в жизнь. Syria's government of President Bashar Assad vowed to abide by the document as its implementation would assure the regime that the Syrian opposition groups would be effectively separated from Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. The Syrian opposition, however, vehemently rejected the document claiming it would provide the Syrian regime with the tools to attack the anti-government militias in the country under the pretext that those militias are either the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda. That said, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported a drastic reduction in fighting across Syria since the deal was signed, but warned it was too early to say whether it would last. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.